Hi everybody and welcome back to the fairy tale family where our goal is to put a little bit of magic into your everyday. I'm Chelsea and today we are bringing you a summer Disney inspired craft. So if you've been with us for a while you know that crafting for Callie and I is a part of our parent-child relationship. It's also part of the way that we get to express our love for Disney. So pretty much every craft we do has some type of Disney twist. Now, if you are a beginner crafter, I wanna reassure you that so am I. Just because Callie and I do it frequently doesn't mean I'm good at it. So I just wanna put that out there that if crafting kind of intimidates you, these are intro beginner crafts because I am an intro beginner crafter. We also have a four season Disney craft freebie that I will link below and I will make sure during the course of this video that the corresponding YouTube videos for those crafts go up. So I know that in a past season we made Beauty and the Beast slime and that actually I just threw away and that lasted about eight months and it was something she played with quite a bit. It was super inexpensive and yes it was messy but it wasn't as messy or sticky as some of the previous slime that we've used. If you don't know this story, I started making my own slime with Callie because we bought her like a bucket of green slime as a prize for doing so many nights, you know, doing well in bed so many nights. And then I, she wanted to play with it when I came home from school one day and I wanted to go to the bathroom because I hadn't, I hadn't tinkled in like seven hours. That's so bad for your bladder. So I was running into the bathroom and I said, don't get this on your shirt, which happened to be a Hannah Anderson, or in your hair. And in the 30 seconds that I was gone, I felt like she dipped the ends of her hair and she smeared it all over her shirt. I had to throw the shirt away and we had to condition slash cut out the slime from Callie's hair. So we started making our own slime. That's a lot easier to remove from clothing and hair. Anyway, that video will be linked here. Um, I'm very excited about the winter craft. It's, I won't spoil it for you. You can check it out yourself. But this is, this is the summer craft. And it's intended for summer because it's supposed to be outside. So I am going to just hop right in because I feel like we have super long intros. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Please subscribe. There's new content here every Monday. And for the month of August, we have bonus content coming out on Thursdays. So make sure that you are the first to know. Okay. Okay. Let's get into what you need and what this summer Disney inspired craft is. Okay. So let's talk about what you need for today's craft. You need somewhere to do the spritz painting. So we are using appropriately a shop Disney cardboard box. You need some type of dispenser. So we don't throw away basically any of our squirt bottles. We keep reusing them. And I didn't take the labels off because I think I might still be able to put more cleaning products in these, but we have two, one for each color. You need paint. I am choosing Callie's favorite colors. These wooden dowels are kind of to scoop the paint out and get them in here. I'm gonna be using this guy to help me pour water into these spouts. Obviously a funnel would be easier, but I don't have one. And then you need some printouts or silhouettes or even hand drawings of things that you want to paint. So the idea here is that you are going to tape one of these inside here and you don't need to use the cardboard box, but it is gonna help us prevent the mess. And we're definitely going to be doing this outside, which is what makes it such a perfect summer craft. So in the next clip, I will show you how to mix up your paint and water mixture. I'm starting by using my dowel to thin out the paint. Just give it a little stir and make sure it's not too clumpy. And then I'm adding it directly into my squirt bottle. I didn't measure this. I'm simply doing this with an eyeball measure, measurement here. And I'm adding two thirds of a cup of water, which was the perfect amount for the bigger squirt bottle. But for the smaller one, I did end up needing to add some pink food coloring to make the color a bit more vibrant. So I'm giving these a really good shake because I wanna make sure that the water can come out with color and it's not 
thick or clumpy in any way. The pink paint was a little chunkier than the purple one, and I think that's just because it's older. So I did need to work with this a little bit more, and I also added three drops of pink food coloring after I put the water in. I went back and added food coloring in to try to make the paint a little more vibrant. Callie loves a lilac color, but we really wanted that pink to kind of stand out and for the two colors to blend together, almost like a watercolor. There is also a reason you're not seeing Callie here doing this. This is definitely an adult job unless you have older children because in a moment you will see that I also made a mess on my own fingers and I was trying to be super careful not to make a huge mess, but I did end up getting that pink paint kind of all over the place. It is. Are you ready for me to explain your craft? Okay, so what I did was I put your two favorite colors of paint and water in these spray bottles. So this one's lilac. What color do you think this one is? Pink. Pink, that's right. And then... Are we, are we gonna spray it? Yes, okay, but maybe back up a little. There you go. Okay, you don't wanna soak it. You don't wanna soak it, but that's gonna be a super light purple color. Pinky. Okay, you wanna try some pink? Now I put some food coloring in here so it's gonna be a lot brighter than the purple is. Okay. So back, far away, far away. There you go. See how it's coming out, the little pink driblets? Farther away. No, that's too far, Goose. Here, we can also tip it up like that. Pretend it's a bun. Oh, you gotta get closer than that, girlfriend. And you gotta point it. Like See, that looks nice. Shake it up. Yeah, shake it up. <laughs> I bet this is better. You can get closer than that if you want. That's too close, that's too close. You have to find this happy medium of, no, don't squirt it into the air, you goon. You're gonna do both at the same time? All right, this one has to be farther away. Nope, not your, not your body, just your arms. This one has to be further away than that one does. This one goes here? Yep. There you go. Oops. You have to squeeze that one a little harder. Oh wow, do you see how it's like pinky purple? That's what it looks like, super wet. So we're gonna take this out. It's kind of like a tie-dye situation right now and let it dry. We've switched to Ariel while our castle dries. Buddy, you're gonna tear holes in it if you make it wet that close. Good job. Oh, I like that pink splatter. <clears throat> that looks really pretty. I like this purple. Yeah, it seems like the bigger nozzle gets it wet a lot faster. Hmm. Hey, hey, <laughs> How about we mix ours together? Okay. okay. How do we do that? This. Oh, I don't think we're gonna do that. It's gonna be this. Because one. then you can just mix it on the paper together. Hey, how about this? You sprawl um, a lot of pink and I'll put mine into yours, okay? Can I have pink in your purple? Sure. <laughs> Did you like that activity? 
Yes, I'm mm. gonna do the um, picture countdown. Okay, we can do the picture mm. countdown. Right now. Okay, so these have been in the sun for about a half an hour, and they're very watercolory. I'm not sure it's showing up on camera, but like this is the regular white paper that didn't really get any splatter. And then it has this like really pretty lilac-y pink overcast. And then we also have little baby Ariel. I think this turned out super cute. Now, as you could see, I did add a few drops of food coloring into my pink paint mixture because it wasn't the, it wasn't, it didn't have that like vivid color that Callie would be looking for. I like the lilac because these are also being printed on computer paper. So that you could print them on like something much thicker and then stand closer and feel like you're getting a more saturated color. But I really like how this came out and it's gonna look so cute on her bookshelf. I'll make sure that we put in a little clip after it dries of it on her bookshelf. And we just keep layering in the same frame her art that she's doing. So we'll have like this little collection of, of her art as she grows in her bookcase, which I, re I think is really cute. So that's it for this Disney inspired craft. I hope you really like it and I hope it's something that you do with your kids. If you do, if you do this at home with your kiddos or even for yourself, because I think it would be cute in any frame, could you tag us on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you do this at the Fairy Tale Family? And don't forget to use the hashtag Fairy Tale Summer Magic to be entered into our giveaway because the August giveaway, we're gonna have two in August. Or maybe we'll have like one at the end of August and one at the very beginning of September. But the plan is to do two around back to school time. Um, and in order to be entered into that giveaway, you need to make sure you're using the hashtag. So that's all friends. Thank you so much for being here. We will see you on Thursday with some new content. And I don't know yet if it's going to be blog or YouTube. So if you have a preference, leave it in the comments below and we'll see you then. I hope you're having a magical summer, everybody. Bye.